Hello, welcome back to Virtual Room 101, Ms. Larkin's class. You previously saw me in social studies because your student has me for either first or second period social studies. And now you're seeing me for language arts and your student has me for either fourth or fifth period language art. So welcome back. In my social studies video, I talk a lot about the classroom itself and class jobs and co-creating the class. And of course, in this video, I'll be talking about language arts, all about language arts. So this is where we start, independent reading genre log. I really hope that your student has shown this to you. And if they haven't, ask them about it. So all sixth graders are required to keep track of their independent reading. And so we created this independent reading genre log. If you've had, if your child has had me, excuse me, if an older child of you, of yours has had me previous to this year. Um, they will have heard of this assignment. However, it, look, it looks very different this year and we did want to adapt given the realities of the way we are learning now. And it really, it was interesting for us to really think about what are the pieces to this that we think are most essential for students. So um, basically over the course of the trimester, they are going to self-select books. In the letter that I gave to all the kids, they have links to how to create a King County Library System account. And on their iPads, they have access to both the OverDrive and the Libby apps. And if they haven't added those, they should definitely add those to their iPads. They also have the Kindle app, so if they have Kindle. But that's a great way through the King County Library System for them to check out books, um, ebooks, and audiobooks too. So during the course of the trimester, they're going to read five different genres. And then they're going to record the books and the authors in this log. This is just the first page of the log. It actually kind of goes on a long way because there's lots and lots and lots of different genres. Again, they're only reading five. The reason that this log is set up as a genre, as genre based, as opposed to, um, let's say, minutes based or pages based, is because I myself have two um, kids and they both had to keep logs. And I found it was a real struggle for them to keep track of how many pages and how many, um, and how many minutes they'd read. And so I really thought, I thought a lot about this. And I think what I really want is for students to be trying different kinds of reading. And so that's why reading across the genres is so important. I know that all of us have a genre that we love and we go back to. It could be fantasy, it could be sci-fi, it could be informational text. Same thing for students. So in this way, I'm really trying to push them a little bit and to challenge themselves. But it's fine for them also to, um, to read the genre that they love, because the whole point of this is really instilling that sense of joy of reading and just reading because you want to. So they're going to record the book and author here. Oh, before I go on, let me, I want to point out here. So you'll notice in the left hand side here, here is where we list all these different genres. And so not only do we list the genre, also give examples of the genre. For example, up here in adventure, here, you, I got kind of cut off, sorry about that, is the book Hatchet. Um, down here in classical, classic animal stories is Charlotte's Web. In autobiography, we see my name is Malala. So try to giving a sort of a broad um, sense. There's also going to be some genres where um, the readings themselves are really short. For example, 
uh, picture books. So if they have, uh, if your student has a younger sibling at home or they're with somebody who's a younger, a smaller child, and let's say they read aloud to them. Uh, that's an awesome genre. Reading aloud is wonderful. I love it. And I, so for that genre, I ask that they read 10 different uh, picture books for their for that genre and what you'll see is it'll be labeled accordingly so where it says title and author there'll literally be 10 places for title and author so that's why this long it seems really long then so they record they do a reading they record what they wrote the title the author we also have a place here for you parent guardian signature now i realize it might be difficult because this is in um, this isn't a google doc that the students are accessing they can print this document off they can print off anything that i give them that's a google doc or a window or a, a windows or anything like that not windows word and um and you can sign that way or you can just find like a really pretty script or something in, in the a font and you can sign it that way. All this does is it's showing me that at some point your student, your child sat down with you and talked to you about the book. Maybe you were sitting around at dinner, maybe it was dinner time or, or maybe taking a walk and you talked about it. And then here you see these three columns, um, September, October, November, and these are three different discussions and these due dates. And I'm going to get to that in just a moment. This entire log is not due until the end of the trimester because it is a trimester uh, long assignment and this whole, this log is due by November 20th. So those three columns that I showed you, I'm going to go back, I'm going to show them to you one more time. These discussions, these discussions are where your students are going to write about what they read. Up here you see under number four, reflect on your reading and a monthly Schoology discussion of windows and mirrors, text to text and the meaningful quote. And the details about those discussions are below the log. And then they're going to check that box. So let's say for the month of September, they wrote about Hatchet. They can just come here, they can put a big X right there, excuse me, in September to show that they did that. Also, I just want you to let you know that in class, we spent time practice practicing this so that the students had an opportunity to practice writing these paragraphs, what they look like, and also posting to that Schoology discussion. All right, so there's three paragraphs that go along with this writing. One of these paragraphs is called a text-to-text -text connection. This is where the student is going to compare what they write, read with any kind of a published text. And when I say any kind of a published text, it could be another book, it could be a newspaper article, it could be a film, it could be a TV show, all of that would be considered things that are published. And I even provide an example here of what that might look like. Again, this is all something that your student has available to them and you can easily access it. I just wanted to make sure that you know that they have it on the log. So all of these paragraphs are explained. So basically what they're doing is they are just taking what they're reading, they're connecting it to something else that they have read or that they have viewed. Notice down here, I say when connecting to the movie of that same book, you must both compare and contrast. I tell the students, when I watch a movie of a book that I've read, especially if it's a book that I loved, uh, often the movie isn't as good as the book itself. Um, but there's always going to be something that I can be like, oh, hey, I really like how this was similar to the book. Oh, but it, I felt like in this part of the book that, you know, they didn't show this in the movie as well, or they, or, or this, or the way that they depicted that character is not at all how I think that character should have been depicted. Another paragraph they'll be writing is meaningful quote. So they're going to be reading, they're going to be listening, you know, there's going to be quotes for them to choose. So essentially they're going to pick a quote from the text. This is just a meaningful sentence or two, no more. Now if they're listening to it like an audiobook, they might have to pause and go back to be able to get it written, to get, the, to get what the quote is and explain why you chose that quote. In other words, why does it resonate with you? And the students I have talked about, what does it mean when something resonates? You'll notice I provided two examples here. 
Um, one example is when you're quoting a description or a passage where no one is speaking. And then the other example is when you're quoting something being said, I call this a quote within a quote. So look at a little bit at, so I'm slipping in a little bit of conventions of some punctuation here as well. And I'm showing students how to do that in text citation. I'm also aware that there's gonna be some text that they might have a hard time citing, um, perhaps audiobooks, And I'm gonna pro be providing sources on how to be able to cite that text as well. And then the last piece to this writing is seeing the text as a window or a mirror. And this is something kind of new for our students. So when they're reading and they're showing us that they're interacting with what they're reading, they're either going to see themselves in it or it's going to open up a new world for them. So we want them to think about this question. Was what you read a window where you learned something or a mirror where you see yourself to you and explain why? You notice for all these paragraphs, I want why, I want details. So a window lets you experience someone else's culture and builds empathy. And I said, in essence, what did you learn from this unfamiliar story? I described it to the students. It's kind of like when you open a window and you look out and you're aware of like, and you're seeing something new. And then there's a mirror. A mirror reflects your own culture and helps you build your identity. So how and where did you see yourself in this story? And that's something we're really talking a lot in our um, language arts classes about, about seeing yourself in the story and also being the hero in your own story as well. So in our class, we're going to spend time um, understanding that reading is not just opening up a book, but it's also, we can also learn through images and through film. This is just a really short, this is just a photograph from a short film that I share about the life of, um, of migrant children and um, the challenges in educating migrant children. And it's a, it's a really beautiful short film, but it gets this idea about telling stories and how everybody has a different story to tell. And speaking of telling stories, um, Another clip that I show is from um, a longer film. It's called Girl Rising, but this is specifically of um, a young girl in Nepal who literally shows us how she used writing and writing songs to, to really help her deal with a really, really, um, I mean, her, her, her life, which was extraordinarily difficult, extraordinarily difficult. And at the end of the day, what we really want to see is this joy of sharing reading and whether it's curling up with a book somewhere or sitting on the floor. I love this image of Calvin and Hobbes. I'm a Calvin and Hobbes fan and this idea about sharing and the, and the joy of it. And that's what we want to bring to everything that we do in language art. Um, with our independent reading and also with our required reading, finding the joy in it and lots of writing as well. I showed you examples of the kind of writing we'll be doing around our independent reading. We're also going to be doing writing where we're going to be analyzing literature. We're going to be writing around explaining things that are important to us. We're going to be writing where we're going to be argumentative and trying to persuade someone about something and research as well. So lots of writing is going to be embedded throughout the year reading and writing. Absolutely. It's language arts and a lot of talking and listening as well. So thank you so much um, for, again, for all that you are doing at home. And I, I appreciate so much what you are doing and helping me. Thank you so much. And um, I, I guess maybe enjoy the rest of your evening or the rest of your videos. <laughs>